hear the word of the Lord. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I consider it a, a great privilege to be asked to speak at this Williams homecoming. Over the years I've lived in Jacksonville, Williams has been one of my favorite churches and has meant much to me from the opportunity to serve the church to the friendships with many of you. Perhaps that is why the Lord led me to this passage and these thoughts. You needn't worry, I shall uphold my reputation for brevity. <laughs> As the late George Smith used to say, I know how to smell a crock pot. <laughs> <clears throat> so we can get on with the important part of the celebration, the fellowship. 170 years, imagine. How can it be Anybody here want to admit you were there when it started? Uh, Paul introduces this passage I've read for you by saying, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. There are plenty of people who like to be recognized for their glib tongue or their saintly speech. Paul suggests that all of that is fine but there is nothing more important than love. <clears throat> so when we gather for a time like this, it must be motivated by love. There are many things we could talk about, even brag about, but they are not genuine unless they are motivated by love. Only love could carry a group through 170 years. There are three things that I've thought about which are important here. The first is love for our fellow Christians. Mark Twain is reported to have said, I never met a man I didn't like. Now, obviously, he had not met some people I've met. <laughs> but the Christian needs to be able to say, I never met a person I didn't love. Love lives. Love lives. Some churches are using a program called Who's My One? It is an attempt to share the love of Christ with more people. Each church member picks one person who does not know Christ and spends the year 
seeking to share Christ with that person. It may be someone who needs to know the love of Christ to lift them from their unsaved position. It may be someone who needs to know he or she can depend on the love of Christ. At any rate, reaching out in love to people in need is a central part of the Christian life. And that transcends any hurt feeling or <clears throat> grudges or dislikes that we may have for someone else. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. So a real central part of the Christian life is to let others feel the love of Christ through your attitude. And that includes those who are not easy to love. The second step in expressing Christian love is to love the church. Now I immediately recognize that the church is people and we've already talked about that. But the church is an important part of the Christian witness. <clears throat> the church is not just to help us it is to reach the world. But if it is to do that, it must exemplify Christian love. I see too many people who are looking only for what the church can do for them. I know some people who are in that class that they're looking only for what the church can do for them. And they say something like, I'm just not being fed. Maybe you've heard that somewhere. Um, it indicates that in their mind, the church exists for their satisfaction. Not so. The church exists to share the love of Christ. To me, a real part of the church experience is their guidance from Paul here. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. Every church needs people who are moving towards spiritual maturity through the love of Christ. God places leadership in the church that we may continue this growth. We are to love this leadership and follow them in love. That is the only way the church will be strong. <clears throat> Furthermore, we are to love all our fellow church members, even if we do not always agree with them. This blanket of love will cover the church and help it to prosper. Ask yourself, am I part of my church reaching out in love to all my fellow Christians? Finally, and I know you like that word, our love is to be for Christ's sake. By now someone is saying, aren't you getting things out of order? Shouldn't Christ be central? Yes, but he is also fun foundational. On this rock, I will build my church, said Jesus. The church is his. So the church is to reach out to him in love. My love for Christ is to be central to my spiritual life. He is the one we lift up in love. He is the one whom we seek to share with others in love. To be plain and simple, he is love. So our love goes two ways. It reaches out to Christ who is the center of love and it opens itself that we may absorb that love. What have I, have I been trying in my feeble way to say to you? Christ and his love is the center of our faith. It is the foundation of the church through which we ex express our faith. Most of all, it is the blessed love that we have for him who loved us so much that he gave himself for us. And now these three remain, faith, 
hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the love exemplified in your sacrifice for us. Thank you that we have the opportunity to share that love with others. Help us always to be faithful through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.